Now I'm going to show you how to assess the lungs and thorax. So the first thing we're going to do, just like every other system, is inspect. So what I'm doing is I'm inspecting the lungs, I'm inspecting that she has a normal breathing pattern. I'm also noting her position. Right? So she's sitting upright, she doesn't seem to have any trouble breathing, I don't see any shortness of breath. And I also don't see what's called the tripod position. So typically if you have someone with something like COPD, you might see them hunch over to try to compensate for that hardness to breathe. Okay, so that looks like the tripod. So she's sitting nice and straight. Again, she doesn't seem to have any labored breathing at all. She seems fine. So what I'm gonna be showing you on the back of her thorax and lungs, you would also do the same to the anterior side. Okay, I'm only gonna show you the posterior, but remember all the tests and the way we're listening is gonna be done exactly the same on the front. Okay. So again, inspecting, I'm looking for symmetry. I'm looking at the rib cage coming down. It's nice and symmetrical. Her breathing is symmetrical. I don't see one side raising higher than the other. And the next thing we're going to do to inspect is I'm actually going to look at thoracic expansion. So what you want to do is take your hands lightly and place them very gently under the end of the thorax, okay? So the bottom of the rib cage. So she has a nice symmetrical thoracic expansion, which is exactly what we want to see. So your second step to assessment is going to be palpation. Okay. So for the lungs to palpate, there's not a whole lot we're going to be feeling for. Um, I can assess for some abnormals, maybe up in the top, the lobes. Okay. I might try to feel for some crepitus. Okay. So crepitus over the lung fields might sound like a popping, almost like a Rice Krispies. Okay. So you might see this sometimes with, again, COPD, emphysema, because it's that air escaping from the lungs, getting trapped in the subcutaneous tissue around. Okay, so again, you're going to be feeling over that space and trying to listen for any popping sound, which I hear none. The next palpation test we're going to do is for tactile fremitus. So fremitus is a normal response, and it's actually going to sound like a vibration. It's going to feel like a vibration. Okay, so I'm going to have my palm, and I'm going to place it over the top lobe first, and I'm going to have my client say 99. 99. 99. 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, Okay, so she's saying 99, and I'm feeling a normal vibration against the palm of my hand. So it's normal tactile primitives. So if we had maybe an increased vibration or increased feeling, it could be seen as something like consolidation, pneumonia. If there is a decreased fremitus, it might be because she's obstructed somewhere. So you notice that when I went with my palm, I'm doing it in a systematic motion. I just make sure I get all of the lung fields. When you're coming down to the bottom of your lung fields, you want to make sure you come out to get that bottom of the left lobe, but also all the way under the axilla for the right lobe, because our right lobe has a third lobe to it. So in order to feel that third lobe, I'm coming all the way over under the axilla. So now we're going to do percussion. So for the lungs, I'm going to hear resonance when I percuss. Okay, so resonance is like a hollow sound, like a low pitch hollow sound that we hear over the lung fields. Right? So I should be hearing resonance. And again, you're doing this in a systematic format, making sure you get all of the lobes. Coming all the way over, and I hear that resonance. So the one thing I can look for is her diaphragmatic excursion. So it's also a percussion test. So I'm gonna have my patient exhale and hold her breath. And I'm gonna resonate her percuss all the way down till I hear a dull sound. Okay, let your air out, please. So when I'm listening for dull, I'm actually listening, and I'm working right there, okay? So you're hearing that dull sound because that's where your diaphragm is coming up. So now I'm going to continue from the mark that I made, and I'm going to have her take a deep breath in and hold it. Again, percussing down till I feel dull again. So remember, dull is going to be over masses. It might be the diaphragm. And you're going to mark it again. So this would be her diaphragm excursion. And a normal diaphragmatic excursion on an adult is going to be anywhere from three to five inches, or excuse me, centimeters. Okay, so she is fine. If you have a very healthy person, you might even see it get as big as seven to eight centimeters. Okay, so finally, I'm going to auscultate. 
probably the most important thing for the lungs. So I'll be listening to normal breath sounds, okay, that nice clear sound, nice hollow pitch. And remember, you're going to want to start from your top lobes and move systematically down. So you're just going to have your patient take deep breaths in and out. And you want to push your stethoscope hard enough into the skin to leave an imprint. Okay. That way you know you're actually listening. And realistically, this should be done without a shirt or your patient's gown getting in the way. Okay. Again, you're listening for those clear sounds. So some adventitious sounds you might hear could be something like crackling, which again sounds almost like a water. It sounds like bubbling. And that could be related to consolidation or pneumonia. Another abnormal sound you might hear would be wheezing. Okay. And if you do hear a wheeze, that you want to note if it's on inspiration or expiration. Sometimes it could be both. So wheezing is very common with people who have asthma or people who have COPD. Emphysema also causes wheezing. But she has normal sounds. So now I'm going to be doing some voice tests. Okay, so these, again, can test or test for skin consolidation and things like that. So the first test I'm going to do is called bronchophony. So the bronchophony test you're going to have your patient say 99, or they can say blue moon, okay? And the way that it should sound when they say it, it should sound like a muffled 99 or blue moon. I should not hear these sounds clear, because if I hear it clear, that could mean that there's a consolidation or fluid. Okay? So go ahead and say 99 for me. 99. 99. 99. 99. 99. 99. 99. 99, 99, 99, 99. Nice. Okay. So for the next test, we're going to call it, or sorry, we're going to say E. This is the e gophony test. So again, another way you can test for consolidation. So when the patient says E, it should come out sounding like a muffled E sound. If you have an A sound, it could mean consolidation, for things like pneumonia and pleural effusion. Okay, so you're just going to kind of say a continuous E. Go ahead. E, 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 E. Again, so I should be hearing a muffled E sound and not the A. Which that, I heard that and that's fine. So finally, we're going to do the whispered voice test. So another way we can test for consolidation. Okay, so any one of these tests will test for consolidation. So you don't have to do all three, but I want to show you all three so you have your option. Okay. So for the whispered voice test, she's going to whisper one, two, three. And again, I should hear absolutely nothing, or I should hear a very, very faint muffle of one, two, three. If you hear a clear whisper of one, two, three, that means you're going through a consolidation or a fluid. Okay, so go ahead and whisper one, two, three. absolutely nothing, which is completely normal. So again, you don't want to hear anything at all, or you want to hear a muffled, very faint one, two, three. Okay? And that is all I have for the lungs and thorax.